Hi, this is Scott Wilkinson, host of Home Theater Geeks. In episode 170, I chat with Barb Gonzalez and Mark Henninger about their experiences with Google's Chromecast. So stay tuned. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Home Theater Geeks is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Home Theater Geeks with Scott Wilkinson, recorded August 12th, 2013, episode 170, all about Chromecast. This episode of Home Theater Geeks is brought to you by Pro XPN. Pro XPN is a virtual private network that allows you to use the internet the way it should be anonymous and unfiltered. For 20% off your new account, go to proxpn.com slash twit and use the promo code HTG. And by Tonks Coffee. Tonks offers a bi-weekly subscription. Tonks sources their beans directly from the growers. They're roasted and shipped within 24 hours, giving you the freshest coffee beans in the world. For a free sample, visit tonks.org slash HTG. That's tonks.org slash HTG. Hey there, Scott Wilkinson here, the home theater geek and director of content at avsforum.com. This week's guest geeks are Mark Henninger, one of the primary contributors to AVS Forum. Hey, Mark, welcome back to the show. Hi, Scott. How's it going? Going great. Thanks. Thanks so much for being here. And Barb Gonzalez, otherwise known as the Simple Tech Guru, uh, who has also been on the show before. Hey, Barb, welcome back. Thanks for having me. So before we get started, and we're going to be talking about Google Chromecast today, very interesting topic that many people are interested in, I want to let everybody know who's watching live, and I do hope you tune in live when you can, on Mondays, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, although today it's about a half an hour late. Uh, at live.twit.tv or logged into the chat room at irc.twit.tv. Uh, you can post questions for Mark and Barb and me, and we will answer them as best we can. So Chromecast, this is, this is a big deal. Everybody seems to be very interested in it. Um, let's start with what it is. Uh, Barb, give us a, just a quick overview of what the heck are we talking about here? Well, it's made by Google, and um, it's a dongle, which means that it's just like a little, about this big long, um, of a little device that goes into your HDMI in the back of your TV. And there you go. And there's a picture of it for those of you who are watching the video. It looks like a, it looked kind of like a uh, a USB memory stick. A little bit bigger than that. Mm -hmm. uh, what they don't show you is. Um, that you actually do have to plug it in either to the wall or to a USB, <coughs> pardon me, on your TV. There and there's go. a picture of that. <coughs> right. Um, anyway, uh, you, get, you put in either an extension on Google Chrome on your PC or Mac. I'm sorry, I'm choking here. And, and it will uh, mirror to the Chromecast. I'm sorry, hmm. I have to take a drink. Look that's okay. Uh, Mark, um, you I actually, you, you probably, <coughs> you probably, Mark, pro you probably, you took a part of a Chromecast, did you not? Uh, I did not. I, I was, I was looking at that on, uh, you, I think it was wefixit.com. Uh, ah, okay. We insides, got a couple of pictures. Uh, we got a picture, uh, couple of pictures of the innards. Uh, yeah. I think if we can pull it up, uh, there's one of, yeah, there's the innards. It's this tiny little circuit board with a couple of chips on it. Uh, I wonder how much memory is on board. Do you know, Mark? Uh, yes, it's uh, got four gigabytes of uh, flash RAM in it. Uh, four gigabytes. That's amazing. It, it sure is. Uh, I mean, that's half of what an Apple TV uh, version three has. But at the same time, it, it's it's an awful lot of uh, streaming and buffering and, and, and computing power. I mean, four gigs used to be uh, a pretty luxurious amount of, uh, of uh, memory. I mean, mm -hmm. not too long ago. So... Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's a, it's an HDMI 1.4 device that I believe at some point in the future might be able to be powered by the TV, but at this point uh, it does have to be uh, externally USB powered, and uh, and uh, its its main purpose is to stream uh, content off the internet that you select uh, using your phone, tablet, or a computer browser. 
Um, and in that sense, it, uh, it differentiates itself from the other streaming devices in that it, it really isn't about streaming local content. It's about streaming content uh, off of the cloud. That doesn't mean you mm. can't stream local content. Uh, there are workarounds or, or tricks, but, but that's its, its primary purpose is to draw data off of your internet connection from the cloud. And basically right. for like Netflix and YouTube and um, Google Play are the uh, different ones that come on your iPhone or on your iPad, you can just press a little button and it'll, if it they're on the same, Chromecast is on the same Wi-Fi, it'll just boom, send it straight oh. from your iPhone or iPad to the, the Chromecast and to the TV. So Barb, that's a bit of the, an issue, actually, because you can't do that from an iOS device. There is no uh, Google Play or, or Google Music on uh, uh, app on an iOS device. Uh, right now, it's strictly <laughs> going to be Netflix or uh, YouTube on your really? iPad or that's right. phone. That's true. Yes. Uh, Barb, have from, you... From the iOS device, that is. Right, right. Barb, do you uh, have you used it with an iOS device or with Android or both? With both, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bill, you had... I've done it with both PC and with Mac. Um, you just have to download the newest version of Chrome and get a Chrome extension for Chromecast. Mm -hmm. And um, as long as they're on the same Wi-Fi, it will um, see the Chromecast and you click on it and it sends. Now, um, of course, HBO and Hulu are very close to um, offering up uh, Chromecast abilities as well. Mm-hmm. We, we actually have, uh, speaking of, of service providers, I want to make sure we, we understand that at the moment, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Chromecast only provides access to Netflix, uh, YouTube, and in the case of Android devices, uh, Google Play. Is that correct? Well, you can also Some access device. Google Play on a, on a PC or on a, on a Mac. Uh, it's right. just iOS devices that can't do Google Play. Mm. And Barb, and you were going to say? Um, that's from when you're talking about from a piece, uh, from a, a handheld device, like from a, a tablet or a smartphone, those are all the only things you can do. But right. when you have it from Chrome, it actually is mirroring your tab, whatever you have open. Ah, well, this was my next question. But before I get to it, uh, we actually have a comparison chart uh, that I hope we can show. Um, uh, I'm not sure, John, if we can. There it is. Uh, from The Verge, and I want to uh, acknowledge that this came from The Verge. Uh, and it shows, if we can zoom in and maybe scroll down, it'll show what uh, the difference is between AirPlay and Chromecast. Uh, I don't know if there's any way to get in a little little tighter than that. Not much. Um, but obviously we have Netflix, we have YouTube, we have um, uh, Hulu Plus, not available on Chromecast. It is on AirPlay. Uh, and it says coming soon, Pandora. Yeah, but there, but there, are, at the moment, quite a few more sources for AirPlay than there are for Chromecast. But Barb, but you you made accurate. a very oh, yeah. it is. Oh, yeah, tell us. Gonna... AirPlay, AirPlay is casting, isn't it? I mean, Barb, right? Barb, go ahead. Yeah, you know... yeah um, that's not that's not what I'm that's not why I'm saying it's inaccurate. Um, I just just a few minutes ago was watching HBO Go that from my PC. And I had a Chromecast onto the uh, the um, I had it sent to the Chromecast. Mm. And so this, um, this is an important this is an important point that while the access to device to uh, service providers might be limited on your portable devices, you can get almost anywhere from a from a laptop or a PC. Barb, is, isn't that right? Yes, I hear that there's a problem with quick time, some quick time and Silverlight, but I have not found a. Uh, any of the networks, I haven't found anywhere where I've had any kind of um, limitations and not been able to stream something. Now, there's one kind of weird thing about it. I mean, you're going to want to do it from a laptop because the only way to control it, if you're doing it from your um, computer to the Chromecast, is to control it on the device that, that has the Chrome, the Google Chrome open. So you, if you want to pause it or do anything else, you're going to have to do that from your computer, not from a, a smartphone or something else. Mm. Um, Mark, that's your experience as well? Uh, well, I've, I've 
we're talking about casting a tap. Yes, uh, you must use a computer. But uh, my personal experience with it has been the same, same as Barb's, that it's been pretty much unlimited. And uh, I was able to set the the casting on my, uh, in my Chrome browser to the high quality 720p setting. And what really surprised me was that the 1080p screen from my, my computer was was on the was on the was on the TV and, and and I could read the text. I mean, it wasn't like the the kind of fuzzy text that you get when you look at 1080p usually on a, on a 720p screen. So, in, in my case, uh, yeah, you do have to be in in, in the browser to, to to have that kind of control and and do that kind of stuff. You know, I mean, otherwise you're restricted to the you know the the, the four uh, service providers that we discussed. Uh, mm -hmm. Leo Leo has has uh, speculated that possibly as Chromecast becomes more popular, and it's already pretty wildly popular, uh, that more apps, more content providers will provide a Chromecast button on their on their app. Um, right. Do you imagine this is a a, a, a good possibility? It seems to be Our, happening right now. I mean, it's been it's been discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in numerous articles that that it's coming uh you know i, I think uh people know that hulu is going to be chromecasting pretty soon and i would I'm, I'm praying for voodoo uh personally i'd like to see voodoo chrome you know have a chromecast extension uh but but i would think that developers have, have jumped on it because uh there's no way that they didn't notice how quickly it was picked up and adopted uh compared to google's previous efforts right it, Our, it is really amazing i mean think about it google tv does not allow um doesn't allow any kind of Hulu. And um, actually recently my HBO Go won't play on my Google TV. However, both companies have actually officially put out um, press releases that they're in negotiation to have uh, access on the Chromecast from this is both Hulu Plus. They, I mean, but it's actually official. It's not rumors. They're, they've actually put it out that they're going to be doing that. Hmm. Yeah, so, I, I remember reading that in January uh, around CES that they were working on the dial protocol uh, and, and that they were specifically interested. I well, wonder why it, they're doing it for the, for the Chromecast, though, and they've... And not Google so TV. For Google TV, yeah. Why have they done that? I don't understand. Well, this is, a, but, this is a part of another question I wanted to ask. Uh, uh, Barb in particular, uh, or Mark, either one, who, who knows the answer to this. According to everything I've read, Google is still planning to support and and keep Google TV going. Why would they do that in parallel with Chromecast? Because Barb, they're two what different is, what devices. They're two different devices completely. And one of the big things about one of the big things about Google TV was always that it was going to aggregate your live um, either satellite or cable with all the online content as well and being able to to search everywhere and just watch it wherever it was whether it was on your provide your tv provider or if it was on online and right. that's why i i don't even watch tv unless it's connected to a google tv because of a lot of the great features there are for that and so i think that they're just two different devices uh, the chromecast just is so cheap that it will end up in everybody's home and they can do some of the basics that they want to do. But for people who want to do a little bit more or really want all of their entertainment in one place, for now, Google TV is really it. Now, Google TV, I thought had that that was the goal and that certainly as I understood it when it first came out, but they didn't really, it didn't really achieve that goal in practice. Has it, has it by now? Um, in my opinion, it has. They have, a, there's an app called, I think Primetime is what it's called now. It used to be called TV and Movies. And I can, when instead of going to a guide button, I can hit a button that uh, will show me what movies are playing. You know, it's a grid of all of the, the cover art. And it will show me what's playing live right then and how much time is left on each thing or i could just switch over to whatever's online now i have a, a G g8 the newest um sony google tv and it has the voice search with the voice on the remote control which we won't go into a lot right now but you can you can search you can say um i want to watch Quantum Solace, and it'll tell you both when it's on on TV and where you can rent it or buy it elsewhere. 
you yeah. know, but it's going to look into the future. So you can see whether you can watch it on your TV or in online. And they're also going to be, I think some of the updates are also going to bring it so that you can get into your DVR and see what you actually have recorded as well. So I remember that being another part of Google TV. Yeah, absolutely. Mark, do you have any experience with Google TV? Uh, not really. No, actually. No. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, Mark, I wanted to ask you, what, what is, what differentiates Chromecast from other streamers? How is it different from other streamers? Uh, well, there's, I, I think the main thing is that there's no tangible home screen with, with app buttons, uh, and there's no remote control. Uh, you, you really do have to have uh, a second screen device, and you have to work from within the, uh, the whatever the application is. Again, in this case, you've only got four on, on Android and two on iOS, but you, you, you work within that app on the phone and not uh, within a menu like you would, uh, you know, on an Apple TV or, or on a Roku where you would, within the actual device's uh, operating system, you would go and launch something. Uh, instead, mm -hmm. you're just launching uh, the app on your phone, uh, regardless of, of that, the operating system, and you are then casting to the TV. Uh, and the phone, when you start doing that cast, uh, becomes your remote control, uh, a volume control and, and a play pause button. And uh, in Netflix, you, you get a nice little slider bar to fast forward and, and rewind your movie. So, so that, that functionality is, is built into the device. Um, and that basically means that everybody who has such a device uh, has a remote control already. And I think that's uh, one of the things that they were pitching is that everybody can kind of contribute to what you watch on your TV. If you're on YouTube, uh, there's a playlist feature and uh, people can sit around in the living room and, and together they can find like the, 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 the videos that amuse them and, and put them into that playlist and, and, and it can be rearranged uh, while it's playing. So it becomes like a jukebox. Um, and I think that kind of like a, like everybody's phone works and, and it's social kind of an element to it makes it, you know, unique among those mm -hmm. kind of devices. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Barb, also, anything? of course, the most affordable. <laughs> well, that's that it. Yeah, we want to make sure everybody <laughs> understands. It's 35 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> And if you uh, got it originally, it was like you got three months of Netflix, so it was eleven dollars, you know, net. Right, yeah. right, right. Are they still offering that? I know, uh, no, they just sold too many of them, and and I mean, actually, there's three to four weeks on uh, Google Play. It takes three to four weeks or Amazon to get one, unless you want to buy uh, buy one for sixty five dollars. There's people that's selling them for sixty five dollars on Amazon oh if you want it right away. Oh my God, but, really? Yeah. Yeah, like scalpers actually, almost. That's amazing. It is. It's it's sixty five dollars scalping. But that's um, what makes it a hit. I mean, wow. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. Um, but the thing is, I don't think that it's really something to compare to another like network media player or streaming device like that. Mm -hmm. Like uh, like it's not you, you don't really want to compare this to Roku. You do want to compare it to something like AirPlay or Miracast, you know, or even Witty. Um, where it, those are also casting where you are taking it. A mirror cast is basically airplay for Android devices where it will just mirror the Android device right onto your TV. And so basically you can do whatever you're doing and play whatever you want to play. Um, similarly to what's happening with Chromecast, but Chromecast is a little bit more um, limited, you know, because you have to oh. have it on it, from the from an iOS device, it has to be one of those four apps, or from the Chrome on your PC. Mm -hmm. But Chromecast okay. doesn't take up your your device. Uh, Chromecast lets you choose that movie and then move on. Whereas if you're casting directly from iOS or an Android device, that becomes what the device is doing. That, you're absolutely right. Um, I think that there's one other one though is that that player one that tried to come out a couple months ago, kind of had the same idea where. Um, what was that actually, again? What was that again? The player, player one. P L A I R. Oh, I didn't know about that one. It it was a it's a, a little stick. I didn't get a chance to play with it. I I got to to meet with the developers and play with it in their round, but I didn't get to review one. And but it really mostly did what Chromecast does. You know, it um, and what, what that is is it's taking the URL of that page and displaying it kind of hmm. um 
actually, uh, we got a couple questions in the chat room here. One is, let me see if I can find it. Uh, if if you if you when you enter in the chat room, by the way, if you use my full handle, Scott Wilkinson, no space, uh, it'll appear in a different color, and and I'll my eye will be drawn to it better. Uh, but this one this one isn't from uh, in the, in that way, which is why I didn't see it at first. iPad ninety nine asks, what if you don't have a USB input on your TV? Um, it, there's the USB. It also goes into one of those USB. Uh, adapters that plug into the wall. So you just plug yeah, it into the wall. Yeah, they give you a power plug. And there's, there's actually a benefit to plug it into the wall rather than plugging it into your TV. Because oh, it that? has it has a, um, the HDMI control, HDMI CEC. So if you have it plugged into the wall and you're on your iPhone and you hit your, found your place on Netflix, and you go and find your Chromecast because it's plugged in, um, you hit it, it will turn on the TV and change the input to the Chromecast. If you have it plugged into the TV, then when you turn the TV off, the Chromecast is off. So you don't get that benefit. You can also <laughs> plug it into an AVR uh, and maybe there's a USB input on there. And you can also plug it into the forthcoming uh, Xbox One and use one of its USB ports, I would think. Uh, if you have you know, an but, Xbox One, why do you need a Chromecast? <laughs> <laughs> you, you wouldn't, but, I, 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 but, but, but we don't know if by the time that device comes out, if you'll want a Chromecast anyway, because we actually don't know what the future of it is because it's so open to be, you know, browser-based. Uh, I mean, that's how I feel about it. Right now, extremely limited, but you never know what kind of tricks Google has up its sleeves. Absolutely. One never does. Now, <laughs> <laughs> pardon me. Uh, before we continue, I would like to take this opportunity to thank one of our sponsors for this episode, which is ProXPN. Now, ProXPN is a global virtual private network, or VPN, a little bit of alphabet soup here, uh, that works with almost any internet connection, creates a secure encrypted tunnel, 512-bit encryption through that tunnel, which uh, should uh, thwart most uh, eavesdroppers. Uh, and this tunnel really is the place where your online data passes back and forth totally privately. Any online application can work with ProXPN, including your web browser, email, file sharing, instant messaging programs. ProXPN keeps everything you do online hidden from prying eyes. And who doesn't think about that these days? Uh, it disguises your physical location and gives you unfettered access to any website or online service, no matter where you live or travel to. And that's what's really important. Uh, it works via OpenVPN or PPTP. You choose. And it protects you against your ISP's six strikes rule. Uh, you can keep your internet, uh, personal internet usage private at work. Uh, so we definitely want to uh, keep private things private there. You can bypass internet filtering and blocked websites, uh, geographical restrictions uh, for internet content and online video with worldwide servers in the U.S., U.K., Asia, and more. ProXPN makes your internet uh, service, your internet connection, truly region-free. Uh, there is software for Windows and Mac with advanced controls allowing you to select the programs and ports you want to anonymously route through ProXPN servers. It also works with iOS and Android devices, allowing you to use your data plan for public or corporate Wi-Fi with complete and total privacy on the go. Steve Gibson, right here on the Twit Network, gave it a great review on security now. So go to proxpn.com slash twit for more information and to sign up. ProXPN premium accounts are normally $9.95 a month or $74.95 for the entire year, but we've got a special offer for our listeners. Use the code HTG and receive 20% off for the lifetime of your account. That's not just one month, that's the entire lifetime of the account. That's less than five bucks a month on the yearly plan. And if you're not satisfied, you can cancel in seven days for a full refund. So go to proxpn.com and sign up with the code HTG. And we thank ProXPN very much for their support of Home Theater Geeks and the entire Twit Network. Um, <laughs> so Cal Ray Jr. in the chat room says, yeah, 35 bucks, that's what makes it different. <laughs> and he's, <laughs> well, and he's I, right, I, isn't it? Yeah, yeah sorry, I have a comment on that, though, which is that... Uh, the, the 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 idea behind browsing on your phone and, and launching whatever you know strikes your fancy uh, through different apps 
Uh, the, the reason that's different than the other devices is, is let's say you want to use your, 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 your iPad to control Netflix on, on your Apple TV. What you first have to do is, is have Netflix launched on your Apple TV. And, 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 and then to actually go to YouTube, you have to leave Netflix and go into YouTube. Whereas, you know, um, with, with, with uh, the Chromecast, what happens is uh, the, the dial protocol allows the, 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 the Chromecast, or rather the phone, to communicate and, and realize that there's an app on both devices. So you don't have to have that app launched on the Chromecast. You can basically just move on to what's next, with, you know, because there isn't that underlying uh, operating whatever menu interface that, that you get Layer. with smart TVs yeah. and, and Rokus. Hey, hmm. So um, it's more Mark? instantaneous. Can I ask Mark a question? Of course, <laughs> um, please. What does dial either stand for or what does it mean or what is it exactly? It's, it stands for discovery and launch protocol. And it simply means that that it will discover if uh, there is an app uh, that, that that is compatible on the com Chromecast with uh, on the device that you're using uh, Chrome or, or whatever, you know, your Android device. So it, it basically allows it to know that that's there uh, and then to launch that appropriate app, uh, you know, without you having to do it um, manually. I get it. I would, have, okay. I would have asked the same question. Thank you, Barb. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, Tim in the chat room is asking, is it possible to add Chromecast-like functionality to a Roku? I've tried Twonky Beam but it's buggy. This relates to a question I was going to ask, which is how does this compare to, the, obviously you would think about the Google Chromecast because it's this little thing and, and the Roku stick, which is also a little thing, but it's a USB little thing. I wrote notes no, on the, that. No, the Roku stick isn't USB. It's oh, HDMI. It's, it's HDMI as well. Oh, my mistake. Yeah. Oh, but it's, but it's MHL. It's, it's MHL. So you have to have it powered from the TV. The TV has to have a, a MHL powered HDMI connection. Right. So you can't use I, it on older TVs. Understood. Mark, you, to Mark, you that question, to I, Well, to answer that question, I was reading that Roku uh, is going to have an app that allows, that's going to allow AirPlay-like functionality. Uh, Actually, uh, they're, they're, what they're talking about it, on the Roku box is <laughs> the, um, the app on iOS right now that um, controls the Roku box. The actual, you know, like remote control app. For a while now, it's had the ability to um, take photos and music and stream it straight. You know, it's, you just have a button that says play to Roku and it'll just play on the Roku. Now from, from, that from app, your computer, you mean? No, your from smartphone. your iOS device. Oh, okay. From your um, iPad or iPhone. Okay. And I'm not sure if it's Android or not. I haven't tried it yet. It just kind of came out. But, um, Anyway, so before you could play your photos from your, your phone or your music from your phone. And um, now the, the app actually shows that a line for videos to be able to play videos from your phone. But right now, what I can find out is that the only videos that'll play from it or photos or anything else, the photos have to be in your camera roll, but so do your videos. Your videos have to be in your camera roll. So it can't be uh, some video that you downloaded and have saved to your um your ipad or your iphone and when it won't play from different apps yet but i have read that um, roku has plans to expand that so that you will be able to use it like airplay on your roku mm -hmm. somebody else in the chat room asked about a uh, about the roku stick and to compare and contrast and i think we've uh, done some of that just here uh, has Google stated when other apps, this is from Jegster, has Google stated when other apps may start arriving in the app store? Anybody know? Mm, in, terms of any in, term, yeah. in terms of Chromecast? In terms of Chromecast, yeah. No, I mean, I think that what we're hearing more is from the app providers rather than the, um, from Google. The like, like I said, the PR that came out from Hulu and, and HBO, um, I think as other apps want to get on board as it continues to get stay popular, if they see it stays popular and people like it, then uh, we'll see probably some more um, different companies and that they will be the ones that will talk about it rather than Google themselves. Mm -hmm. Dr. T in the chat room is saying no negotiations needed. Uh, it's an open API. Just program it. Uh, to the to their apps, so it may not be any big deal to uh, to include 
Chromecast in your app to add it to to whatever app you, that you're already making. That's the feeling I got. You don't need Google's permission like you would Apple's permission, uh, mm -hmm. which opens it up to a lot more content per se. Yeah, exactly. Untoward in the chat room says, uh, we actually answered this already. Does Hulu, uh, does Chromecast block Hulu content like Google TV does? And the answer no. is no. No. Um, the other thing I noticed is that when you, when you're in Chrome and you go to your Chromecast um, little icon, your extension, there's a, if you right click on it, there's a thing called something like inspect elements or something. So people who are developers can go in and get all this code that they need to create different APIs. Mm, okay. Um, I was going to ask you guys about the user interface, and we talked about that a little bit. Uh, Mark, you mentioned that, that there wasn't really one. <laughs> there's a little bit more on Android than there is on iOS. But, uh, yeah, essentially there's... Uh, it converts your phone's uh, volume control into a television volume control. And on uh, Android, it gives you a nice play, pause button when your phone is sleeping. And uh, otherwise, you're, you're kind of at the mercy of, of how it's integrated into the app itself. Uh, and, and Netflix did that really well. Uh, but it, it remains to be seen if, if all apps will have like a consistent way to, uh, you know, to, 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 to control the uh, the, the content, uh, the playback and, and casting or whatever. Wouldn't that be nice if, if they were all consistent? I suppose it's too much to hope mm -hmm. for, but... <laughs> well, they're saying it's not... I suppose. Or, the or, apps or aren't I, consistent what, now, you know? Yeah, yeah and, exactly. And it's, and it's funny, but they're not consistent on, 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 on iOS. Uh, the, the biggest complaint about the current implementation is using the YouTube version of, uh, you know, the, the version of YouTube on, on iOS and, and casting to it because it has... Uh, the, the functions that are right on the surface on Android uh, hidden in submenus. Mm -hmm. Another difference that just occurred to me is that with Chromecast, once you cast uh, from your phone or your tablet or something to it, you can then, in fact, turn the phone or tablet off and it will continue to work. Am I right about that? That's right. Right. Yeah. So that there's a difference. I don't think you can... Well, there aren't any other casting devices, or or are there? Yeah, no. So but if you turn it off, then one. just that player one that I was talking about. Ah, exactly. Okay. If you turn but off Mark... your phone, you're not going to be able to stop your movie, though. Just uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's a good movie, who would want to? But if it's bad, then uh, maybe you want to keep your phone on. <laughs> yeah. um, <clears throat> okay. What functionality does the Chromecast not have that you'd like to see? Mark, let's start with you. Oh, well, I would like to see it uh, support up to 7.1 channels because I would like to see it uh, streaming more services, including, I think I mentioned, uh, Voodoo, uh, which currently provide the highest quality streaming videos. Oh, my. Uh, uh -oh. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, so I would like to see that because uh, right now it, it supports 5.1 audio and being a bit of a home theater geek. Uh, you are a I, home theater geek yes, after all. Yes, <laughs> I, I expect that, uh, you know, I think you're, you know, there's a lot more coming in, in, in the future with, with soundtracks and with, uh, you know, you, you, you've got a situation where we're having more channels uh, or, or at least 7.1 is, is going to be useful. Uh, the the multi-dimensional uh, audio, the object oriented audio that I think you've been writing some articles about uh, and, and I haven't actually experienced myself, but I think that can be mixed down to as many speakers as you have in your own home, if, if I'm not you know, correct. incorrect. And, and with movies correct. coming out in that now, uh, there's, there's no reason why a movie couldn't be in 7.1. Um, and since that's supported by a lot of Blu-ray players, by the PlayStation 3, uh, that, that was actually a little bit of a step back for me uh, with, with the Chromecast going back to uh, 5.1 audio. So I'd like to see that. 7.1 audio right there. Okay. Barb, how about you? Um, I think that that it wouldn't be so much other content or anything. It would be an ability to um, control, like somehow work with your phone and your computer to control um, while it's playing back on the Chromecast. So that, I, I mean, I don't mind being having to go to it on my computer, but when my computer is across the room or something, I want to be able to pause it and everything else without walking across the room to to do that. And um, otherwise, you know, all the 
all the different apps, you know, whether it's Spotify or, or um, actually I like Google play music better than Spotify, but that's my own thing. Um, mm -hmm. And you get so, that now you know, with Chromecast, you know, that Google plays yeah, on Chromecast. So it is, I love, yeah, I'm a big fan of, of Google play music. Um, but, but the other thing, you know, one of the things that we kind of haven't said anything and I don't know how Mark's experience has been, but there has, there is a bit of a lag time um, between the casting from, uh, especially from a computer to um, the device. So I think that that needs to kind of be cleaned up a little bit and speed sped up. And it, it sort of starts slow, sort of like Netflix always kind of starts slow and then gets better along the way. It sort of starts slow and then, and does better. But, um, and then the other thing is that um, my computer, even though it's only a couple of years old, needs a little bit more power and because I get a little bit of glitching um, ah, on well, the device. This, yes, this brings us to the next big question, uh, which is how does it perform? And uh, uh, Sorry you to just get said, ahead that, of you. <laughs> no, 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 you, you, you actually yeah. timed it perfectly. Yeah. Uh, Mark, you mentioned to me off the off the air that uh, that you had not experienced any glitching, as as Barb called it. Uh, so tell us your impression of of how it performs, both uh, in terms of audio and video and streaming reliability. Well, I'll start with this uh, because I have my own uh, digital media based business. I pay for high speed internet; it's 100 megabit per second, um, and I, my computer is wired, uh, and all my computers are meant to do workstation, video editing, things like that. So everything's fast and uh, it's an ideal environment for the Chromecast. And in that sense, um, the performance has been perfect for me. I mean, uh, when I when I cast the tab with the highest quality setting, it was smooth, sharp video. And, and like I said, I could even read uh, text, uh, which kind of surprised me. So, you know, uh, my my experience has been completely positive. Uh, I I I think I I do see like the the, the ramping up of video quality in Netflix, uh, but that's relatively brief. And I've experienced that with every other device that you know that's been connected through Wi-Fi that I've had. Uh, you know, I think it just does a bit of a buffering of the 1080p before it actually shows it to you, or I don't know what's going on. Uh, mm -hmm. But it hasn't, uh, it hasn't done stopped mid, you know, midstream in a movie and, and said buffering. And, and that's actually happened to me in every device that I've had prior to this. I've bought the Apple TV twice. I bought a Roku. Uh, I had a PlayStation 3. I, I wound up, uh, you know, hardwiring my PlayStation 3 because I got annoyed with those interruptions. And I mean, I, I can't say that it would be consistent with other platforms, but right now I'm, I'm very just happy with the uh, way the, the, the Chromecast streams uh, in my house. I've, I've had perfect performance. Yeah. So Cal Ray Jr. in the chat room is saying he's got two Chromecasts in his house and they, they work great. Barb, how about you? Have you, you said you had a little bit of glitching. Yeah. And I have a very fast, also I have hundred megabits per second um, coming into my house as well. However, mm -hmm. Um, going around the house can kind of get to be slow from time to time. So, and like I said, my computer, it actually had a little, uh, a little notification that came up and said that, uh, I might have issues because my computer had some, was kind of slow. Huh. Okay. So it told you it, it was detecting something, some problem. Yeah. 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 So, but, um, it, it just depends. And I, I would never use it to do something like play a game online or something. It would absolutely not work. I, there's too much latency for, mm -hmm. for people who have Wi-Fi around the house. Yeah, exactly. But it's worth uh, noting that all those features are still in beta. The, the, all the casting features are, that's are true. beta. Yeah. Wait, the, the casting features in Chromecast well, are in beta? The, the, the tab, we're going to call it the tab. In Chrome. Casting, I'm sorry. Oh, in yeah. Chrome. I got gotcha. you. Okay, right. okay. All right, good. So that should improve as as they solve bugs and whatever. Um, NLE guy in the chat room is asking, is it is it too big for the TV? Imagine the dent in the wall. <laughs> if you were to uh, wall mount your TV, it would be difficult to put this thing in in a back <laughs> uh, a back. No. Uh, no. Not if the uh, not if the HDMI port is side mounted. True. Well, You'd have to take it off. Are, are, even the ones on the back don't usually stick straight back. And the other thing no, no, is that they, 
the other, I mean, a lot of them are up and down, but um, even with that, it comes with an extension because since it's so fat, it might be over, you know, overshadowing the next HDMI. So it comes oh, with an extension, yeah. a little tiny extension plug about, about that big, mm -hmm. um, you know, so that it can just sort of dangle. It's a dangling dongle. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so Cal Ray Jr. in the chat room is saying, uh, plug your Chromecast into your AVR and you have Sonos for cheap. Full playback of all your music without the need for a display. All control from and info on your phone or tablet. Uh, Mark, yep. you mentioned that you could uh, plug this thing into your AVR, and that's probably what I'm going to do when I get one because I have a projector-based uh, home theater, and you wouldn't, you couldn't plug it straight into a projector because then you wouldn't get any sound. Right. Uh, so, um, well, if you, you know, unless it had a HDMI return, uh, but yeah, it would have to have more than one HDMI input, and it would have to have the that return. I forgot what it's even called, but can't you send a signal back through an HDMI cable? Uh, you can with audio return channel. Right, audio um, return channel. Right, ARC. So if it has that functionality, then yeah, you could connect a second HDMI cable to your receiver. And if the receiver had ARC as well, uh, you could get the audio back that way. But it seems to me much easier just to plug it into your receiver to start with. For sure. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, well, we got, a, we got a little bit more time here, and uh, there's plenty more to talk about. But before we do... Uh, I would like to thank our second sponsor for this show, who is a new sponsor on Twit, and I'm very happy to introduce them to my audience. And this is Tonks Coffee, T-O-N-X. It's a small company made up of a tight-knit group of experts who believe that everyone deserves a great cup of coffee. And they can do it right in their kitchen. Now, I know most of you probably go out to Starbucks or someplace like that to get your coffee every morning, but Tonks doesn't think that's necessary. It's too expensive, and you can do it at home and maybe even get a better result. Tonks sources their beans directly from the growers, roasts them, and ships them within 24 hours of roasting for the freshest beans you can find. It's really good coffee. Tonks' Twitter feed will attest to that. And uh, home-brewed coffee can be just as good as your favorite cafe. It's not as hard as those baristas make you think. Now, if you're into the barista coffee art... That's another, another question altogether. I, in fact, have a friend who is a coffee artist. But if what you're looking for is a good cup of coffee, then you can't, you can't get it if you buy bags of beans from grocery stores. Pre-ground coffee is even worse. Great coffee actually has very little to do with fancy gadgets and expensive gizmos, too. you got to remember that as well. Tonks gives you these beans roasted and shipped to you within 24 hours. In a bi-weekly subscription model, which is really very cool, sends the best beans on earth directly to your door for the price of a few cafe visits. Uh, if you're hitting the cafe most mornings, this is a much better and more economical way to get great coffee. Uh, they also offer plenty of help on the best brewing methods and equipment. Uh, now, Tonks sources directly from the growers, and because of their extensive relationships, they can follow the tilt of the earth and select the best beans while they're at their peak. Tonks Coffee also makes a great gift. If you're looking for something for that hard-to-buy-for person, why not get them a great cup of coffee every morning? Uh, so much more meaningful than a gift card, that's for sure. Now, if you fancy yourself a coffee connoisseur or just love coffee, you need to try Tonks Coffee. These guys are fanatical about delivering uh, the best beans in the world. And... Um, Every two weeks, being the subscription, you can get a new batch of incredible beans roasted to perfection. Tonks is subscription only, and they're offering free sample to our listeners. Visit tonks.org slash HTG to get some for yourself or send it to someone you know who appreciates, who appreciates the finer things in life. Visit tonks.org slash HTG today. And we thank Tonks. Tonks Coffee very much for their support of Home Theater Geeks and the entire Twit Network. Well, let's see here. Uh, we've got um, several different questions here I wanted to, uh, to talk about. So Cal Ray Jr. says, better network connection so I can... Uh, this is something he'd like to see. A better network connection so he can stream from his NAS boxes... Uh, save movies and, and music and so easily. Uh, Barb, have you tried streaming from a NAS? 
Well, you can't stream directly from a NAS. You kind of have to play some games. But um, like the Western Digital, my book live duo, um, it has an app called WD2Go that you can get to on uh, Google Chrome. When you get to it on Google Chrome, then you can look at all of your photos and, and your other devices. I also have a Pogo plug that um, will play the movies. And so I, if I go to that via a web browser, then I can play the, play the movie on the Pogo plug and send it to the, the Chromecast. So I've been able to get a lot of the stuff that I have by playing these little games um, because otherwise you can't really get your uh, own home media library stuff. Mm. So Kyle Ray Jr. in the chat room says he figured out a roundabout way, but it wasn't easy. So uh, maybe he'll give me a little more detail in the chat room here. Um, does anyone know, uh, SIOK Online in the chat room is asking, does the Nexus 7 come with the Chrome browser? Anybody know? I don't. I, I didn't. I'm not using it. Well, there's okay. going to be a Chrome but, browser but on Android, right? Android, but it's not going to be the same Chrome that they're, yeah, it's not the same Chrome that they're talking about that you can cast a tab. There's no casting from, you know, from a, from any tablets or, or portable devices. Exactly. Um, you get ah. the Chrome, Chrome cast from the tablets. So even if, even if your tablet has the Chrome browser on it, uh, you're not going to cast from that. I wonder why they did that. Anybody care to have uh, there's, a guess? There, there, there's, there's definitely a, 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 with a computer. There's a, there's like a performance minimum just for it to, uh, to, to operate. Uh, you know, exactly. so, so I think it's a, a matter of just not having enough CPU power in tablets and, and, and portable devices to do that. Uh, at least not in the, the beta form. I think the mm -hmm. other thing issue also is, um, you know, what video can be played on that device. And I think that you're limited compared to the amount of video, the kind of video that you can play just on a regular PC or Mac. Mm. Uh, Dr. T in the chat room is, is issuing a correction, uh, alerting us to a correction. There's an article on the Chromecast API here. Uh, oh, here's the summary, he says. For now, Google has tight reins on whom, should be who, can use their Cast API. Whoops. I, yeah. Uh, Okay, who can use their Cast API and what apps are created with it. Developers must first get approval by Google to use and access the API and have their Chromecast device whitelisted for development. So they are keeping a little tighter rein on it, apparently, than we thought at first. Um, Undermine says he has his Chromecast uh, plugged into the AVR for the same reason. So that's clearly uh, one way to go. It's the way I'm going to go, I'm sure. Um, Web3780 says he plugged his Chromecast into an HDMI switcher because the TV only had two HDMI ports. So that's kind of an interesting, uh, interesting works. idea. And apparently it worked. Cool. Um, so there you go. Let's see. Um, oh, here's a question that I, we haven't come up with yet. Uh, one of the things that I have heard some people talk about is whether or not you can take the Chromecast with you on a trip, say, and plug it into your hotel TV. Uh, will it work just as well and easily under those conditions, or is there some problem with that approach? Mark, what, did, what, did, what have you learned about that, if anything? It's a big problem. Uh, public Wi-Fi won't work because public Wi-Fi tries to stop devices from seeing each other for security reasons, and the entire... Uh, functionality of the discovery and launch protocol uh, dial uh, requires that the devices openly see each other. So unless you bring your own router uh, and tap into the hotel Wi-Fi that way, or you use your uh, your, your laptop to create an ad hoc connection, uh, you, you're not going to simply walk into a hotel room with your Chromecast and uh, and and start using it by plugging it into your phone and and, and pulling out. You know, plugging into a TV and then pulling out your phone. That doesn't work. I, I do a lot of traveling. and um, It's true, you is, do. <laughs> <laughs> that is the problem with a lot, any of these devices that need to see each other on the same Wi-Fi. I mean, if when you think about it, you go into the hotel and um, you 
it, it immediately comes when you try to hook up to their Wi-Fi, even if it's free, you still have to agree to their services and everything else. So there's always that that layer in between. And you can't do that on a device, whether it is the Chromecast or a Roku or anything else. There is, however, along with doing something like an ad hoc kind of connection, a little bit simpler is this thing called, I believe it's called SharePoint from D-Link, where it, it's a device that you can take with you that will create that um, sort of sub Wi-Fi for them to see each other. But that's, it's... You know, it's not as easy as just going and hooking it into the TV at your hotel room and being able to, to mm -hmm. make it work. It's just not. Yeah, it still to. requires bandwidth as well, just to function well. And, and hotels usually don't provide that kind of bandwidth. Like that's true. <laughs> hey, Market. you know something? I I when I was in Canada recently, I was streaming um, at 500. It was it was at 500k? It wasn't even one megabit per second, and I was able to stream my the newsroom to my computer and hook it up to a hotel, the hotel, the TVs at the hotel. So I was able oh, to yeah? do it that way, you know, but, um, at 500, so even though it's 500, at 500 K, I didn't even, you know, it wasn't even mm -hmm. that bad. It wasn't the, the quality wasn't even that bad. It was pretty surprising. I think <laughs> the premise is if you, if... <laughs> sorry, Marco. Since, oh no, but since you already have to have a laptop, since you already have to have a phone or a tablet, uh, to use the Chromecast in a hotel as opposed to a Roku where at least there was the promise that you just have a little device in your remote control, you basically already have the device that you should use to, to stream on, on, on your hotel TV with good you. Good point. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good point. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, it, it, it was something that people were talking about in the beginning of, oh, this will let us do, mm -hmm. do it anywhere, but not Small so. Small and cheap, yeah, it seemed nice. <laughs> Uh, Burke in the chat room says the HDMI extension that comes with a Chromecast also serves to improve its Wi-Fi reception. Oh, that's and right. uh, there's a question for you. I mean, I guess it acts as a little antenna. Uh, neither of you have had it only works with Wi-Fi. You can't even plug it in a uh, hardwired Ethernet, uh, which I generally recommend for streaming. When people have a streaming box like Apple TV or Roku or whatever, you know, I say best to plug it into a, a hardwire Ethernet rather than Wi-Fi. You'll get more reliable performance. You can't even do that with a Chromecast. Have either of you found, uh, I, I guess not, since we already talked about performance uh, issues, uh, but, uh, you know, could there be a potential problem with, with Wi-Fi? Uh, you know, you can imagine if you did have it up on a wall and it was sticking into one of those recesses where, you know, how they have a recess sometimes where the ports are, um, then it would be, behind a wall, behind the recess and everything. And it, it could block some of the signal, I imagine. Mm -hmm. But in my case, it would have been fine either way. I was really concerned about it and I was surprised it didn't do it. And uh, and my Blu-ray player, when I have it on Wi-Fi and, and roughly in the same spot, it doesn't seem to get quite as good a signal. I mean, I don't think there's real parity between the two, like four bars is four bars on the two devices per se. But I, I do know that it ended up working better uh like netflix specifically I, I just ran a series of tests and found that the the chromecast didn't like the it seemed like the when the strength of the wi-fi signal fluctuated the chromecast wasn't really affected by that as as, as badly as my blu-ray player uh hmm. is hmm. don't know why okay curtis b in the chat room is saying one correction you can airplay to an apple tv in the background and do other things at the same time if the app was written that way Craig's Twit iOS app is an example. So uh, there's at least one example, but of course you have to write it in the right way. Um, a a oh, Ace Detect, uh, our, our good friend and host of the next show coming up, said, I stayed at a Montreal hotel. It had great bandwidth. So mm -hmm. uh, Snafu also says Canada has good bandwidth. So uh, Barb, you were, you were in Canada um, and even with 500K, it worked okay. <laughs> There you go. I'm not saying that they didn't have better hotels or anything else. I was like in cabins and things. So. Yeah, right. Understood. Oh, Untoward says better buffers and four gigs of RAM is is uh, a good reason for that. Well, okay then. Um, usability, content, AV quality. Generally speaking, uh, you guys giving a thumb up, thumbs up to uh, Chromecast. Absolutely. Oh, totally. Otherwise, I'd sell it on eBay and make a profit. 
<laughs> true enough. True enough. Okay. <clears throat> well, I've still got to order mine, and uh, I, I know it'll take four to six weeks, so they say, but uh, but I definitely want to check it out for myself. Uh, anybody else in the chat room have any uh, last-minute questions? Yeah, Curtis B says, at 35 bucks, it has to be a thumbs up. Well, <laughs> yes, it yes, it does, but it really also has to work well. And so far, we've seen that uh, from everything Barb and Mark have told us, uh, it works great. So I'm thankful very much for the uh, information and the deep knowledge that you guys both have. Oh, you're welcome. So Absolutely. that, yes, uh, Barb Gonzalez, the Simple Tech Guru at simpletechguru.com. Uh, or like me on Facebook at simpletechguru.com. Well, and, and like her on Facebook. What's your Twitter handle? Um, it's Simple Tech Guru. It's really easy. <laughs> Very easy. Okay, good. Well, stay. I, I encourage everyone to uh, follow along with uh, Barb Gonzalez and uh, Mark Henninger, who is certainly at avsforum.com. You also have your own website for your own digital imaging business. What is that? Uh, that's imagicdigital.com. imagicdigital.com. And I am iMagic on AVS. So look for his, he, he writes a lot of stuff on AVS and really great stuff too. And I'm really happy to, to have him contributing. Uh, he also uh, posts a lot on AVS Twitter feed, which is AVS Forum, and on Facebook too. And uh, that's also AVS Forum, right? Right, correct. Facebook.com slash AVS Forum. So lots of places to find Mark and Barb both. And I thank you both for being here. It's been really great. Thanks for having me again. You bet. Thanks for having you can me, Scott. You bet, Mark. <clears throat> uh, of course, you can also find me at avsforum.com, and you can email me at scott at twit.tv. You can also follow me on Twitter at htgeekscott, and uh, also be sure to check in on uh, the AVS Forum Twitter feed as well. And you can find previous episodes of Home Theater Geeks uh, right here on twit.tv slash htg. Uh, and on YouTube at youtube.com slash twit home theater geeks. But of course, you really want to tune in live every Monday, uh, 2 p.m. Pacific time, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern time uh, to be able to participate and ask questions in the chat room where uh, we I monitor every show and try to pass along as many as I can. Next week, I'm on vacation. Ah, but don't worry. Home Theater Geeks will not abandon you. We have already pre-recorded a show that will play next Monday at our regularly scheduled time. And my guest geek on that show is the renowned technologist, Robert Heron, who joins me to answer chat room questions for the entire hour. It was a great conversation and a lot of great information. So I really hope you will tune in for that. And uh, then when I get back, uh, we will have more home theater geek goodness live and in person. So uh, please tune in next week, and I will look forward to seeing you again in two weeks. Until then, geek out. <laughs>